I'm introducing my own talk, and, or maybe I'm just giving my own talk. I haven't given a talk at this conference for some time, but uh, I thought I would say a little bit about kind of where we go from here, and I don't mean just we Code for America, I kind of mean the bigger we there. And every time I'm up here, whether it's just introing somebody, I, I like to say that we're on a journey together. Um, and first of all, in addition to all of you who make this journey possible, it is your journey. I want to acknowledge um, many people who've made this journey happen, particularly for Code for America. We have over 1,000 supporters at Code for America. Uh, but these individuals and organizations and many of the individuals representing the organizations are here in the audience, do a really heavy lift for making what we do possible. And I just want to thank them very much. Thank you. So I said we're on a journey. I have a colleague who always reminds me that this is generational work. Our journey is not going to be short. There's a lot of ground that we have to cover on the way to where we're gonna go. And at Code for America, we are starting with those who need government to work for them the most. What I've come to realize is that we're actually on a few parallel journeys. And the first is a journey towards greater scale. So eight years ago, we set out to prove that government can work for the people and by the people in a digital age. And we did this by putting tech talent to work with city governments to help them provide better services to the public. And we wanted to show what was possible when you broke the mold and solved problems with users first, starting small, iterating with data collected in the real world. We wanted to show what's possible, not just so that we could do more of it, but so everyone could. And at first, we were just a few people and this is our very first Code for America Summit. We fit in a room that size. We were sharing and learning and teaching and supporting each other and ultimately starting to create a community that could do more collectively than we could individually. It's eight years later. We're still doing that work. But now with 1,200 people in the room and thousands more engaged in this work everywhere. Many of you here work for entities that didn't exist in 2011 when we started. USDA, San Francisco Digital Service, the Georgia Div Digital Service, we've got two people from Georgia. Many of the new vendors in government that are shaking up the ecosystem. A lot of you are here representing Code for America brigades. There were no Code for America brigades in 2011. Now there's a lot of us. Woo! What it means to do technology and design in government has changed dramatically since then, in large part due to the community that comes together here each year. So eight years later, we're not just a bigger community. The work is bigger. We're touching more people. In 2011, we showed projects like Discover BPS, which helped thousands of public uh, school kids' parents in Boston. And after creating over 100 projects through the fellowship and many, many, many more through the Brigade Network, we decided to just run with a few of them. And today, our projects serve hundreds of times that many people. We set a goal of closing the participation gap in food stamps in California through Get CalFresh, which came out of a fellowship project. And now we've helped hundreds of thousands of, el of uh, eligible people apply. In fact, over half a million by the end of this year. We're taking that work to five more states, but with Medicaid and other benefits applications built in, and you'll hear about that tomorrow. Uh, and similarly, of course, you heard from Jasmine just now about streamlining the process to clear eligible criminal records now at much greater scale. We're in great company. You have teams like the VA Digital Service, who is providing uh, over 600,000 veterans the ability to apply for health and education benefits. Access NYC is in the same ballpark of users. And this is the kind of scale that our field has gotten to. Now, we're nowhere near done, but growing by orders of magnitude of scale is exactly the path that we should be on. Towards a day when every American sees government services working for them the way they should, effectively, and respectfully. So to get there, it can't just be the people in this room, or even a bigger room. And it looks like we need a bigger room this year already. It's got to be everybody. It's everyone in government. It's the companies. It's the public. And the people driving this change have to represent the rich diversity of our country. And since we can't all fit in this room, or even a much bigger room, we need to build and spread the tools that share the knowledge and build the culture. So it's not just the playbooks and the vision statements. There's a lot of those, and they're very helpful. 
but also the pins and the stickers and the songs and the rituals and the cakes. We love cakes. The hiring practices, the language in the contract line item numbers, the job classification rewrites, and of course the shoulders to cry on when it doesn't go well. We need these things from everyone, shared with everyone, and not just when we can all be in the same room together. So our commitment moving forward is to be better partners to all of you in doing the work, to help you get what you need to do the work better. We want the tools in your hands to advocate for changes in procurement, hiring practices, launching your own digital service. We want to help you find talent and help them find you. In four communities, we're giving, your, uh, giving partners in government uh, through our new community fellowship uh, program, and you're going to hear about that tomorrow. And we want to grow that to dozens or even hundreds of communities in the future. These fellows are going to help your, you as partners in government dismantle the status quo and build something better. But this program is only going to be one of many ways that we do that as we invest in cultivating the principles and practices that work. Now, I said we're on multiple journeys. The second journey is towards greater depth. Even from our very first fellowship projects, it became clear that if your goal was to put a current form or process online, you were probably not going to be helping people. In fact, you might be making it worse. So actually making it better for people, as we've all found out, getting to better outcomes for everyone is a much more complicated effort. At the very first summit, Joel Mahoney, who was one of the first Code for America fellows, stood on stage, and he spent about one minute explaining his project, and the rest of the time uh, talking about the deep policy issues that his project had raised. Again, it was Discover BPS. These are deep, complicated policies with roots that went back to heated debates about busing public school kids in Boston, debates that have been going on for decades and have social dimensions intersecting with race and class and equality in American cities. This is deep stuff, and this is the work. A few years ago, while we were starting to dive deep into the operations and policies and food stamps and criminal justice, a wise woman said something to me that stuck with me. She said, starting with users isn't just how we should be doing tech, it's how we should be governing. And she should know that woman was Cecilia Munoz, who happens to be our next speaker, and the time she was running domestic policy for the Obama White House. And to have the lead policymaker in the country say that, that meant a lot. And to have her to continue to choose this work after she left the White House is also means a lot to me and I think a lot to all of you. And I'm glad to be doing it still with her. And now in 2018, that uh, journey deeper has continued. And the stories that you'll hear today tell how far this work has gone beyond technology, beyond making just the more in, uh, effective implementation of policy, and into a leverage point for making policy that actually works, a new way of making policy that actually works. Um, we gave you a paper on your chair this morning uh, about delivery-driven government, and I'll quote from it, modernizing government technology focused on the delivery of government services using modern tech and best practices is only half the solution. We must now learn to drive policy and operations around delivery and around users and complete that feedback circuit. We're calling this delivery-driven government. It needs a name. There's a name. And what we're doing here has new dimensions, of course. If you look at the world today, it's very different from the last time we got together, which was, if you recall, just a few days before the last presidential election. We've moved from this naive thesis that tech could save government to a realization that perhaps the values of public service and democracy may be needed to save tech. That brings me to our third journey. So a few years ago, I asked a question, are we just going to be a crowd of voices or are we also going to be a crowd of hands? And what I meant is that we can't just complain that government doesn't work as it should. It's no one's job to fix it but ours, the American people. You might do that in government or with government, but if you're here, you're not doing it for a paycheck. You're doing it as a citizen, and I mean that in the broadest sense of the word, because you care about your country. No one is coming. It's up to us. We've been doing the work. We've been doing good work. Our hands have been very busy. So maybe it's time to think about our voice again, 
not a crowd of voices yelling complaints, but what if we spoke with one voice, the way a coalition does? If we were a coalition, what's our agenda? What are we asking for? Of whom are we asking it? How do we build the support of the entire American public behind us? And how do we stand on the shoulders of the social movements that came before us? What I'm saying is that I think whether we know it or not, we're on a journey to becoming a coalition with an agenda, maybe a movement. And we, maybe we need to start taking seriously our role, not just in surviving the broken politics of our time, but in offering a real alternative to the false choices that we are so often asked to make as citizens of this country and of other countries. My friend Brian Leffler says, neglecting the machinery of government is a choice. Partisan gridlock in Washington is not the only reason the American people have lost faith in government. We here are all making a different choice. And now maybe we need to frame that choice up, not just to ourselves, but to the country. Because what's at stake is our democracy. Thank you. <laughs>